Hi, thanks for joining me today. My name is Cassandra Dinkman and I'm the Education Support Officer at Down Syndrome Queensland. Today I am presenting to you our information webinar for Reading Our Way. It's an introduction to the program, it's providing general information and an overview about Reading Our Way kits which includes research. If you'd like to contact me my phone number at work is 3356 6655. My ad email address is edsupport at downsyndromeqld.org.au. We have Facebook pages for Reading Our Way and Down Syndrome Queensland, a website for both of those as well and a YouTube channel for Down Syndrome Queensland if you'd like further information information also. Before we begin, we would like to acknowledge the nations, the First Nations people as the traditional custodians of the land that we are on today. We acknowledge and pay our respects to all elders past, present and emerging. So looking at the research what do we know about children with Down syndrome? We know that reading is a strength for children with Down syndrome, and this is because of their visual memory skills. 65% of the population, which includes those with Down syndrome, are visual learners. So this means that supporting information visually can help retain information. Children are introduced to literacy in preschool years and they reach their highest levels of achievement throughout life. So people with Down syndrome make use of their good visual memory skills to read but are slower using phonics. So visual information can be processed more quickly and with more success than verbal information. And what that means is that learning from listening can be difficult, but learning from looking is much easier, which is why we encourage the use of visuals wherever possible. So uh, despite difficulties with verbal short-term memory, visual memory is identified as a relative strength for people with Down syndrome. And a student is likely to remember something that they've been, that they've seen for much longer than something that they've heard. The research tells us that a sight word approach to reading is frequently recommended. So research suggests that exposure to literacy activities can improve spoken language skills, it can improve memory, uh, speech, articulation and grammar. So by using a visual reading program, 70% of individuals with Down syndrome achieve functional levels of literacy by adult life. It may take longer to achieve, but it is possible. So the notion of a plateau um, or point in which reading development ceases is simply a myth. There's no evidence that there's a glass ceiling on the learning of anybody, including students with Down syndrome. People with Down syndrome continue to learn well into their adult life. So just to let you know that during this webinar, we have included references, which I'm happy to send out as a PDF to anyone who, re who requests them. Please send that request to my email address, which I have given out to you. So, if a child can't learn the way we teach, maybe we should teach the way they learn. I like that as a reminder. Let's have a look at some characteristics of Down syndrome that will affect reading. And it won't be all of these characteristics for every student, but it will certainly be some of them. So an intellectual impairment, which means that retaining information or knowledge is diff can be difficult. Difficulties with verbal short term memory can um, cause issue with remembering what they need to be 
uh, saying or doing. Limited auditory processing capacity. So it takes longer to process auditory information than visual. Vision difficulties. So 100% of people with Down syndrome have visual acuity, which means that they're lacking with those fine details and sharp contrasts, even with properly fitted glasses, and not all people with Down syndrome require glasses. Hearing impairment. So because of the small eustachian tubes, uh, people with Down syndrome often have hearing impairments. And the verbal capacity of a student with Down syndrome is going to affect their ability to read. So why do we, why do we teach reading? Besides the fact that it's part of the curriculum, it's developing a range of speech and language skills. Uh, so reading may form a pathway to oral language development where children learn to read words which then form part of their expressive, expressive vocabulary. It's important in spoken language skills, both clarity of speech and speech intelligibility. And for all children, uh, it will improve their vocabulary. It helps to improve memory. develops an understanding of literacy skills such as grammar, language structure, sentences, phonetics, um, writing skills. So when do we teach reading then? So the earlier children start reading, the greater the impact is on their speech and language development as well as their memory. So it's never too late to start for any student. And we have some adults uh, that we work with who are starting to learn to read now as adults. And learning from, uh, learning can continue into adolescence. And this may in fact be the optimal time for learning to occur because we can do this through activities that are meaningful to the participants and have purposeful outcomes. They need to be able to make connections. Students need to be able to make connections between their personal lives and the literacy activities that they're engaged in. So particularly when something is of interest to them, like cooking or learning how to do or make something, then they're more likely to be interested in um, reading. Texts and tasks chosen around their interests are going to be the things that grab a person's attention and outcomes that are evident to the student. So as a result, their motivations remain high when they're wanting to learn because they can see that there are results, that they are improving. So what we need to take from that is we need to make sure that we're making it meaningful to the individual. We have had adults in their 40s and 50s who've suddenly developed an interest in reading. And so then they begin their journey with reading our way, which is wonderful to see. And what are we doing when we're beginning reading? So what should we do in terms of beginning reading? This is the order that we would recommend using. So the pro progression is based on strengths and learning style of students with Down syndrome. It could be used for any students, but it's based on the learning styles of students with Down syndrome. It builds a firm foundation which will in turn develop a love of reading and a sense of accomplishment. So starting with personally significant words, such as family names, friends' names, pets, favourite foods, places, sports, in conjunction with the pictures to match those things. And then we would move on to words that motivate and engage the student. So words that they've already heard, that they're familiar with. Words that they're already using in their speech. So for example, my son, some of the first words that he word, heard were run, stop, faster, because we were involved in lots of exercise and that sort of thing. 
Uh, then we would move on to high frequency words, words and then moving on to unknown words. So Colligan says that skilled readers require the ability to recall memorised words and the ability to, to apply letter sound rules to decode unknown words. So when do we incorporate phonics then? Phonics is important, but it's covered at a later stage. So once a student has the ability to recall memorised words, approximately 100 words, then they're ready to incorporate the phonics side of things. And how? How do we begin reading? So what does it look like? Where do we start? Um, so step one would be a whole word approach that introduces with the words to the students as whole units where the student recognises the whole sight word by sight um, without analysis of the parts that make up the word. So no phonics, no decoding, they just simply know that that chunk is this word. And it's used by, or it's used for, high frequency words. So those words that um, people are particularly unable to decode. For tricky words like was and were, that's when it's helpful. It's an approach that research shows to be successful, particularly with visual learners. So this is focusing on building on strengths rather than weaknesses. And in the beginning, we're working with errorless learning, which means that the student is prompted to make the correct response immediately. The prompt is then faded, which encourages accuracy with the, the least amount of errors or frustration. So for example, tell me this word, give the child three seconds. If they know the word, then they say it straight away. If they don't know the word, then you say it. That means that they still get to learn it if they're not sure. And if they do get to know it, they get to show it. So let's get into the details of Reading Our Way. The program was developed by Down Syndrome Queensland with five levels. It's a visual approach to teaching literacy and it's based on research around literacy development for individuals with Down Syndrome, which has most commonly been researched by Sue Buckley. And at the end of the webinar, we've included a list of references for you to look at. But in short, Reading Our Way uses the matching, choosing, naming process. It's a whole word approach. It promotes the importance of teaching reading in a variety of contexts, using fun, engaging activities and personalised resources. And this only makes up part of the reading that you would do in class or with your child at home. So you'd still need to include areas such as comprehension and phonics, but it's a great tool for establishing confidence in reading. Now let's have a look at a video of a teacher's perspective of using Reading Our Way in the classroom. So when Jacob came to me at the start of the year, he was you know, quite below year level in reading and I was just teaching him reading like any other child. But having then gone to the conference and purchased the program, my whole way of teaching him has changed and as a result he has just taken off with his reading, um, you know, benchmarking him levels way above where I thought that he would be. He's jumped a good five or six levels since we have purchased the program. Um, his, his recognition of those words in environmental text is, is happening as well. He's, put, he's pointing out words, he's spelling words um, that otherwise he would not have been doing. Um, and yeah, he's just loving reading. He can't wait to come to the library every week and put, borrow a new book and take it home. And yeah, he loves it. The, the program has been fantastic. All of the resources are in there. Um, we love that there's the CD as well, so we can just print off what we need. Um, the cards are already laminated, ready to go, um, and 
and the books that are a part of the program are topical for him as well and grab his interest. So the program itself is so easy to use because we can just grab it um, when we need. And being he, he's short attention span, we need them to be quick, sharp activities as well. So it's really, it's really fun for him to use as well. I've actually got quite a diverse class. I've got quite a, a variety of needs in my class. And um, so the Reading Our Way program Though we purchased it just for Jacob, um, we've been able to use it with a few other students as well who find it difficult to break words down phonetically. Um, so that sight word approach and the repetition of that sight words, um, those sight words has been really beneficial for those students as well as for Jacob, um, being visual learners and, and taking things in visually, um, that repetition of those words has just been um, very beneficial for them. The words at this stage are common sight words and so they're in Jacob's everyday language. Comprehension wise that is the words that he's starting to use a lot more in his speech. We're actually using the program also in conjunction with his speech therapist and she will focus on the same words that we are looking at for the week or two. Okay, just to recap, the teacher isn't using, just using this um, program for students with Down syndrome. You could be using it for that 65% of the population who are visual learners. And we know of schools who are currently doing this, but we're no longer providing the CD. We've moved with the times with this, and that's now provided in a different way. So we started, we start with matching. And with matching a word or a picture, we actually start with matching the picture um, with another picture exactly the same. And this is the errorless learning. We then move on to um, simultaneous prompting or we introduce simultaneous prompting. So speaking the name of the word immediately to the student in order to scaffold and build their understanding. So for example, dog, can you find the word dog? If it's possible, encourage the student to repeat the name if they are able to um, vocalise. So say the word or sign it if they want to. So say the word as much as possible to the student during this phase, repeating the word, modelling to the student and giving it in context. I would also think about adding the sign, as I said, to the word. Um, because if the child is using sign, then this would be a good time to show um, that part for them as well. And then we move on to choosing. So choosing um, one word from a group of words after hearing the word aloud. So for example, dog. Can you find the word dog? And they have to choose it from a selection. So learning to associate the spoken word with the written word as a whole the shape of it, the length of it. So hear it and find it. If the student's having difficulty, limit the number of options. So for example, you would start with two different words, dog and another one. And then as they improve or as they get quicker with finding those words, then you would make sure that you've gone from two words to four words and then um, six words and so on. You just keep increasing that. So the choosing process allows the student to demonstrate that they can read the word without having to say it. It's not essential for them to say it back to you as long as they can recognise the word. So even for those students who find it difficult to verbalise, um, then they would be able to use this program as well. And finally, naming. So student the student reads the word and says it aloud this phase may be difficult for some students um, so you would need to consider alternatives such as signing or a picture replacement activity if that's what's needed for the student there's a constant time delay so give them about three seconds after approximately three seconds if the student's not responded then tell them the word and this 
again, encourages that errorless learning, which in turn is allowing the student to feel like reading is something that is achievable for them. It's within their grasp. So let's look at the kits. The kits include beginner, oh sorry, I'll start again. The kits include foundation, beginner, intermediate, advanced and extension. You start with the foundation kit and that includes both the picture and word cards. Do you follow the matching choosing naming process with the cards as well as the accompanying act? activities and you begin as I said with two pictures building up to four and then moving on to six and initially focusing only on the pictures and then you would move on to focusing on the picture and the word and then focusing on the um, just the word itself. So once the com the child's confidence um, has increased with matching, choosing and naming pictures, you can introduce the words. So after mastering the two sets in the pack, we recommend that you focus on personally significant words such as specific toys, books, siblings, pets. We would add in, in our family, we would add in grandma and grandpa. Okay, and these are ideal for students who are not yet reading, for the younger children to familiarise them with the process within the program. It, and remember that it's never too early or too late to start. So then let's look at the beginner intermediate or advanced. So once the student is confident with that foundation pack, you would then move on to set two, the beginner or set th and then set three, the intermediate and then set four, the advanced. So all of these kits focus on the acquisition of high frequency words, sight words, and each kit progresses in difficulty. So the kits are made up of 10 sets and each has six words in it. So there's 60, 60 words per kit. These words have been drawn from Fry and Dolch and the 100 most, commonly work, 100 most common words lists, which with each pack, you would begin with two words and then increase to four words and then you would increase to the six words as you started with the, the uh, foundation pack. And in sets one and two, there are two books. One is easy and the other is difficult. And from set three onwards, all the way through to set 10, there are no books because you would focus on topics of interest to the student, specifically to the student, and use books relating to that topic. So for example, if they're interested in space, you could then use words relating to space. You would use books with personally significant pictures as much as you possibly can. And about halfway through the beginning, set, you would then introduce the phonics, as I said, when they've got about 100 words. So we don't recommend one in particular because you would follow what your school was using. And that could be anything such as jolly phonics, reading eggs or whatever. Ideally, you'd be aiming to use a phonics program that has actions for the sounds so that it's easier for the student to remember. So for example, in jolly phonics, they learn the e is for I, I insect. Um, so this would be ideal for students who have a basic reading ability, this level, um, and students who are working to learn their high frequency words. And then you would move on to the um, extension kits or extension kit. So this focuses on the acquisition of subject specific vocabulary, those higher order words. It includes four sets. There's the numbers one to 10, the teen numbers, and then the tens numbers or the 
T numbers and then colours. So this encourages the use of personal subject specific vocabulary drawn from the classroom. So for exam example, science words, when you're working on a particular topic, they need those words to um, be familiar to the student. When you're learning about the life cycle of a frog, for example, you would include words used within that topic. And this is ideal for primary school students to develop reading skills in the areas of maths as well as new theme vocabulary. And high school students who encounter a lot of new subject specific vocabulary and you would incorporate it into their sight words so that when the vocabulary is needed that they are more able to read those words. Some of the activities included, let's just have a look. So we have, um, you can download these via the USB or as a download. And the activities could be used as part of the part of your reading groups or small groups. They could be peer activities. You could use them for same ability or differing ability groups. And the activities include snap, memory, there's downloadable bingo, there's a fly, squ fly swat game that's downloadable too. You just need to purchase your own fly swats. Um, and these can be things like the ones from a cheap shop around the corner or even the ones I've, I've seen some that have a clear window so that you can still read the word inside it. Um, whatever it is, as long as it's, it's the idea of the fly swat to cover it. And then there's also the leapfrog game as well. Frog leap game as well. So here's a video of one of the students from our CEP class, our Continued Education Program class. In the video, she's using Reading Our Way to read the words, match them, and then put them into sentences. And she's just finished high school. So let's have a look. You want to match some words? Okay. Good work. Good job. That was awesome. Thanks. That was really right? good. Okay. So if you were wanting additional activities, you could go to our Facebook page, um, which is in the address there. Don't let these limit your possibilities though. I like using Pinterest to spark ideas and find new new ideas to use. But also on our Facebook pages, we add ideas or suggestions every Tuesday that you could incorporate. So both on our Reading Our Way page and our Down Syndrome Queensland page. These little videos can also be found on our YouTube channel. And um, I would be encouraging you to incorporate as many additional activities as possible. So look to the students' interests to find things that you could do to grab their attention with those when you're working on learning those words. If you can't think of any of your own or need some ideas, here, here we have things like um, bubble wrap pop. So the words are underneath the, the bubble wrap bubbles 
choose a word, then find it, then pop the bubbles, maybe hopscotch reading words into hop or writing words into hopscotch. So I like to also do that with squares and I don't necessarily have it as hopscotch, I just have them as squares on the floor so that they can be hopping around and finding those. Threading beads using pipe cleaners and um, they need to thread the beads on to spell the word from the paddle pop sticks. Um, something to remember though, when you're doing the threading activities, students, younger students um, may find it difficult to thread if the pieces are small. So try and make them as big as you possibly can. Feel and find bags or I spy bags. You might ordinarily see these with objects, but we have made one at Down Syndrome Queensland that actually has their sight words in it. And you can change those in and out dependent on the words that they're using. Um, you could use rice to fill the bag. And I just bought cheap pencil cases that had a window in them um, so that you could change them. One tip though, I would say use a, um, a zip tie to make sure that it's uh, closed between each lot because it's a lot of rice to clean up. Uh, you could use target practice with Nerf guns. So that's quite a popular activity, one that children will often ask for repeatedly. Um, and there's building blocks there as well. You can see the building block ones. They can build their tower with all the words they know. Building blocks with Lego is what we've used here, or Duplo. Um, and a, a word building activity, which is errorless, can give the student or can help the student to see the word already formed. So that might be helpful for those students who are struggling to learn a particular word or a particular set of words. Sight word bowling, bowl the word over, read the words bold, that you've bowled over. Find a word with reusable ice cubes and tweezers. And that's great for fine motor activities as well. Read it, build it, write it. So they read the word, build it with using the individual letters, and then they have a go at writing it down the bottom if they're ready for that sort of thing. Um, and the old reliable fishing game. So put the words onto a fish shaped piece of cardboard and they have to read them when they find them or find them when they read them. So many ideas on, on Pinterest. I um, would suggest that you go and have a look there as well. Don't forget our little clips that we have on the Tuesdays. Thankfully, we're now moving away from withdrawn activities because if inclusion is when children are spending the majority of their time in the classroom. So let's have a look at some ideas. We could also we, we also don't want to be using these as an independent activity as much as we can. We want them to be a group activity with their peers. So then how do we, how do we add it into our reading um, programs or reading groups in the classroom? So here's an example then. Research has shown that reading intervention lessons work best in this way. So the way that we've got on the screen now. So generally reading groups are already happening in most primary schools where you work with a small group at, at, at a time in rotations. And this could be slotted in as one of those activities for the visual learners. So you would be reading a familiar book, the book that you read in the previous activities or even all last week, which is at the level um, lower than the current ability an easy read, which should take about five minutes. And then you'd read an instructional book. So completing your reading record using that next book. Again, about five minutes um, dependent on the group. Moving on to sight words in a game, they can be familiar or unknown words. But if you're, if you're doing this with familiar words, be sure to add some unknown words too. And then when they're ready for this stage, letters, sounds, phonology, at whatever stage the child is at. Could be just one letter for the lesson or that week. 
it's important to revise those skills, particularly for students with an intellectual impairment, because it's likely to take them a little longer to retain that information. And then finally, a shared or guided reading session at the instructional level. So ideally, this would take about 20 to 25 minutes, sorry, 25 to 30 minutes, which slots in perfectly for reading rotations. It needs to be short and sharp bursts to help keep the student's interest, keeping or adding in new knowledge wherever you can. By keeping that structure the same, it becomes easier to keep the activity running smoothly because they know the routine, they're familiar with it. And then looking at the literacy strand. So in the literacy strand, we would be introducing a new word. So we would revise the words that we've learnt, introduce one new word a day. Um, best to choose the words related to the class topics or work that they're doing for themselves. Introduce and discuss the new word. So in written form, spoken form and pictorially. Create a word web where you can of what they know about the word. For example, it might be the word water. What things do they know about it? And then moving on to the second one, the word meaning and context. For any word that might have multiple meanings or picture, you could use picture sort or matching words to the meanings. On the next page, I have an example of a resource that could be um, made you to um, incorporate this sort of thing for words such as duck, park, or glass, those sorts of words. The third one is the expressive language, so verbal, putting the word into a sentence as Catherine did when she was working on it. And then the fourth one would be the expressive language in written form. So then perhaps writing a sentence. If they're unable to write, then they could use a close activity where they could fill in the correct word. And catering for whatever level that the student is at. So sentence writing, sentence sorting, whatever is appropriate for that student. These activities could again be done in a rotation and they could either be in a mixed ability group or in the same ability group. You could use it as a peer tutoring activity. What I want to express to you though is that children learn faster if you make learning about their own world. So particularly if you're incorporating their peers into that learning, isolated students are less likely to engage or retain information. You'll find that they're more likely focused on why they are isolated or what others think of that isolation. Um, or what, what am I missing out on, for example. So where you can make an activity that is within the classroom and it's part of the activities that are already going on or planned. So here are those activity examples. There's the word web. Pencil is the word here. Okay, and then on the other side, duck, fall park, glasses, there we go. Okay, and then here's uh, some, here are some examples of the resources from our website. So you'll find them in the shop under the education publications. They do come for a small fee. I think we've currently got them for $7.50, I'm not sure for a pack. You'll also find other packs there as well. So have a look because there are resources available to save you from having to um, create everything yourself. So the overriding principles. When incorporating Reading Our Way as a class activity or in the home, we must assume competence and set high expectations for the student. If you think that a student can't do something, they're likely to prove us right. So we want them to know that we believe that they can do it and they will rise to those expectations. So research shows that when a parent or teacher believes the child is capable of learning, then the child will achieve more. 
uh, such an important factor for um, any learning success, I think, is having that knowledge that you're believed in. So making learning fun, we're not looking for sit-down activities where the students must learn instead of using games. Instead, we're wanting to use games, mess, fun, anything to make it feel like learning isn't really the focus, although we know it is. And I've found that some of my most successful lessons are those that students come away telling people that they got to paint or make a mess. But when you dig deeper, you learn that actually the activity was also about learning to read their, their next lot of sight words or whatever they, their learning intention was. With that in mind, allow the student to set the pace. If the intention was to learn the next set of words and they got through those with no issues, then move on to the next set. But equally, if you do the activity once and they find it tricky, revisit it um, at other times so that they can feel like they've accomplished or they are accomplished um, when they do the learning. Teach over test. Start with errorless learning for every new set. Establish a routine, model the correct responses and then move when the student is ready. Sure, moving up to the next level is always exciting but be sure that they know the previous words first. That's what we're trying to establish is that knowledge. Less focus on moving up, more focus on understanding the level that they're on. Being able to apply their own newfound knowledge and building their confidence so that they can see, I do actually know those words, is very useful. And that's essentially all the information for reading our way. So let's look then at other considerations. Reading our way can be purchased using your NDIS either through communication or access, not under education. Um, so we need to look into that if you're considering to purchase Reading Our Way. Phonological awareness and phonics. So in terms of com covering phon phonological awareness and phonics, we'll look to at reading comprehension, but just to cover some areas that come up when looking at reading skills, starting with phonological awareness and phonics. Um, this is just to cover that. So in the early stages of reading, children with Down syndrome find it difficult to use phonological awareness and that tends to come from difficulties with auditory processing, short-term memory and weak letter sound correspondence because of their hearing and speech production. So the research suggests that when a student with Down syndrome has the reading skills of a typically developing seven or eight year old, they will begin to use their phonic skills independently to read and to spell like other children. Um, and an understanding of phonics is needed to read unfamiliar words. So therefore, we need to teach whole word reading and phonics. Phonics comes a little bit later though. So a quick explanation. Phonological awareness is rhythm, rhyme and onset and rhyme. Phonemic awareness is isolation, blending, segmentation and manipulation and phonics is the letter sound relationships. So traditionally when we're teaching about phonological awareness we're using some of these activities that we've listed here. So rhythm and syllables, clapping, hopping or jumping the sounds in words, rhyming, so nonsense rhymes, poems, using Dr. Seuss, whatever, word families. So students might have difficulty with auditory discrimination, uh, so always have visual supports. Um, and some examples of that would be at, an, app, uh, app or op is in the picture there down the bottom of the screen. Um, and you can make up real words or nonsense words. Kids love making up nonsense words to go with uh, word family. 
Blends or digraphs such as kul, dr, or, or sn, or ch, um, using those to um, group words together. Segmenting, so say it, move it. Practice repeating sounds and segmenting or blending two to three sound words. Um, so the picture that we've got here is zip. So you would say z i p, z i p, z i p, z i p, and that sort of thing. Single words to sentences. So how do we do that then? Going from single word words to sentences, we'd start off with the one sight word. So in the example that we've got here, that would be a. And then we add a picture to make it a phrase, a pig, a cow. And then we're adding more sight words to make sentences. So I see a pig, I can see a sheep. Adding in those sight words that, that we know students know or are learning. And when the student is ready to move on to writing, you should follow the same process. So starting with writing one word, then two, and so on. And you could use small whiteboards or etcher sketches. Um, or even an iPad for those activities. Uh, it just doesn't, it doesn't have to be pencil and paper. There are lots of different things that you could be doing to um, take part in this. And then reading comprehension. So reading comprehension is an area where we tend to receive lots of questions. Students with Down sy syndrome often struggle with comprehension and there tends to be a lag of about two grade levels. So emphasize reading for content rather than decoding if you're working on reader comprehension. Looking at the pictures for clues and enjoying reading the book. If we're focusing on comprehension, then the reading part needs to be easy. You wouldn't expect children to need to decode words, to need to decode words in the text if the focus was on comprehension. They need to be two separate things. So comprehension is fastest and easiest when the child is reading material that is of high interest for them. So in other words, a personal topic, as we've said before. Silent reading may facilitate better comprehension than oral reading because the emphasis is placed on um, pronunciation rather than meaning when they're orally reading it. Um, so the child needs to be able to actually read in order for that to happen. And poor comprehension is often a direct result of poor working memory. So are, are your tasks or assessments assessing comprehension or are they assessing memory? We need to make sure that we're clear on that. And explain um, you know, to the student, what I'm asking you to do is to show me your understanding of this text. Um, so for example, rather than reading a whole book and then asking the questions, you might break that down into chapters. Or if even that's too difficult for the student, you might break that down into paragraphs. So read a paragraph, ask a question about that to show their understanding. How then do we improve a student's comprehension skills? So we define the purpose and capture interest before we read. So make sure that the content of his, is of interest to the child wherever possible. Utilize the underlying motivator. They want to learn about something you want them to read. Okay. So we're making sure that we're both getting something from this. Select texts of relevance and interest to the individual. Ask questions during reading to help make sure it makes sense of that text. So as I said, maybe break it down into a chapter or break it down into paragraphs, whatever's going to work for that student. Explicitly teach and model reading comprehension strategies. Model looking back through the book for answers to, because it doesn't have to be about memory. This isn't a test. 
as long as they can find that information when they go back then and they've understood then that's what we're after so read two to three sent uh, read the sentence two to three times before asking comprehension questions use multiple methods of expressing comprehension um, so reduce emphasis on expressive language. We're working on things like matching questions to answers or matching captions to pictures, maybe sequencing pictures, role playing the story, drawing pictures. But consider the student's vocabulary and language skills. How can we best get them to answer the questions to show that they've understood the text? That's really what we're after. So use visual supports as much as possible so that they aren't overloading the auditory short-term system or short-term memory. An example of that is on the bottom right-hand corner of this page. So you could use pictures or words and break them into categories of who, what, when and where, um, which demonstrates the student's understanding of the text. And this is a great way to share an easy modification to the curriculum. So this, the child is able the child is able to provide the same outcome, but at a level that is appropriate for them. And then handwriting. So handwriting is an area that can be tricky for students with Down syndrome because uh, uh, most students with Down syndrome have low muscle tone. So we need to consider the use of support such as pencil grips, slope boards, footstools, move and sit chairs, all those sorts of things where you can use the advice of the OT if they're working with one. That would be a space that we would be seeking their advice if we haven't already. Make sure that the size of the letters and the lines are suitable, that the darkness of the lines is appropriate for the student too. Using a writing implement that's appropriate, such as a triangular pencil or a larger size, consider engaging alternatives um, and other multi-sensory techniques. So writing with chalk, writing in sand, writing in shaving cream or using an iPad. There's apps such as um, Red Writing or Learn to Write that are really useful for those sorts of things. And then beginning sentence writing. So when you're beginning to work on sentence writing activities, encourage the visual opportunities as much as you can. So using picture writing or close activities, sentence starters, scrambled words to sort into sentences, ordering pictures into a paragraph for older children with um, a, a developed understanding of the language, maybe independent writing and allowing that opportunity for success as much as possible and increasing the student's confidence where we can. So then visual spatial learners. Moving into the um, onto spelling for visual spatial learners, we use visual ways to learn the whole word as much as possible. So Silverman suggests that we do things like um, use different colours, big letters, use magle magnetic letters, picture spelling um, such as the word pull there, um, giving each word a, pic a themed picture, rhyming, get students to write down as many words that rhyme with their spelling words, um, games about rhyming, Using Twinkle or Sparklebox or Pinterest to get ideas from those sorts of things is really useful, I've found. And here's some more ideas as well. So CVC, consonant, vowel, consonant, word, sorts. Play-Doh, making the words, using that errorless learning. Writing over the top of the word that's already written, maybe using a highlighter. And here are some of the references that we've got 
um, for anything that we've used in terms of research or the resources. Don't forget to utilise our website. Um, the resources can be found either in the Education Resource Hub or the shop and our Facebook pages for both Reading Our Way and Down Syndrome in Queensland have activities posted, posted every Tuesday, as I said. You could also find these um, as well as previously recorded webinars on our Down Syndrome in Queensland YouTube channel. Again, I'll say to you, if you have any questions at all, my email address is edsupport at downsyndromeqld.org.au or if you would like to call me at work, that is 3356 6655. There are my details there on the screen. Thank you very much for joining me for this webinar. I look forward to seeing you soon.